in an effort to get some more man content on the channel, I am going to be following Eddie around for a bit. This is the cow we're gonna dry off, but I know there's some people that, you know, they're gonna think we're crazy. You got it, right? By the time you notice it, they'll never milk out of that quarter again. This video is sponsored by Major Dairy AI Services Limited. And he's just coming back from town and has to show me how to reset the robots because the power is currently out. Well, my truck got dirty. He didn't beat the rain. So this is how I go to town and get my truck serviced without needing a ride from somebody. Yes, it's very handy. That's the reason you got it, right? So I've been working on getting uh, truck service, tractor service, vehicles clean inside and out. The one tractor's at uh, the John Deere dealership, getting a little bit of work done to it. Just some simple stuff. Get it back later this week. We'll clean the inside and outside of that. This one got cleaned inside and outside yesterday. This one got cleaned outside last week. I still have to do the inside of this truck. So, still lots to do. So I mentioned that the power went out, which in and of itself is not a problem because we have an automatic generator that kicks in. But the issue is that there is about five to 10 seconds without any power because the generator needs to sense that the power is out before kicking in. So the robots shut down and you need to restart them in order to get them going again. If there are cows in the robots, then they get stuck inside and can only get out once the robots are restarted. So we've got this lady and that lady stuck. And you can see that the end gate is kind of open a little bit. The end door, the or sorry, the entry door there. But the milker is in between her legs, so I didn't want to try to push her out there and have her tromp on it. So you're gonna open this. You actually don't have to open this. There's supposed to be a rod connecting this to a thing inside. I'm gonna get it hooked back up because it fell out, but I don't know how to get it back in. I'll get you to do this one. Okay. You want to turn this. How do and you? Then reset. Well, I'm glad I'm getting this on video because I don't know if I would remember all that. So you want to flip it back on? I'll get it where they hook those back up and then you don't have to open it. Then you just have to do this. Oh, and is that easier? Yeah. How come both of them fell off? Oh, well, I'm not sure if I took the one out or like this. It's supposed to be kind of like... Okay. I don't know how like, you're supposed to open this. I guess you're not really supposed to open it. Jeez. She was ready to get out. I think that's the thing that's probably not supposed to be doing this and I open it once or something. Oh. How do you fix that? It. Then press this. Might as well spray it off. Hold it for two seconds.
so we're gonna dry up a cow today. This is the cow we're gonna dry off. My dry cow program is not, not using any dry cow treatment. So a lot of guys, when they dry up a cow, they'll stop milking them. They'll treat them with a dry cow treatment and then put a sealant in. And what that does is um, it keeps bacteria from getting in the cow's udder when she's in her dry period. My dry cow program is I knock them down to one milking a day for about seven to 10 days in the robot. You can program it that way. And then the robot really cuts back on the pellets and then they drop in production. And then I put them in the dry cow area and get them on dry cow feed for about 36 hours. Then I'll bring them back to the robot. I'll milk them once more, put them back in with the dry cows. And if I see them utter up again, then I'll bring them back into the robot after another 36 hours. And usually by that point, they've dropped off so much between not getting milked twice a day or three times a day and being on a dry cow feed, which does not have much value in it for milk production. So I do that and I get fussy about that because I don't want them to utter up and fill up with milk when, you're when they're in the dry cow area and leak um, because I don't use dry cow treatment. So me and my brother stopped with dry cow treatment on our dry cows about six, seven years ago. There's a new thing out lately where they talk about selective dry cow therapy. That's picking certain cows that you think are eligible to not treat with dry cow treatment because you don't think they're gonna get bacteria in the udder or you don't think they're gonna have a problem with getting sick from leaking milk and stuff like that. I get them to a point where they're not gonna have milk in their udder when they're dry and they're not gonna leak because I don't use dry cow treatment. And the point is that saves money. The consumer's heading that way where they don't want you to use antibiotics or less antibiotics. So we felt if we could do that on our own and get away from treating dry cows, then that was good for us to save money and good for the consumer. The reason we started going to that is because we started bedding with sand in our dry cow area at my brother's farm and uh, we felt the sand bedding was doing such a good job to keep the dry cows clean that we slowly started to pick groups of dry cows to not treat. And when they calved and came in, they had no mastitis. And we just kept doing groups like that. You know, one group we dry cow treated, the next group we didn't. And then eventually we just stopped dry cow treating. And we've never seen a cow come in with mastitis. And once me and Lauren started here on the farm, we carried on with the same idea. We got sand bedding here. It's really nice for the cows and the dry cows and we feel like you know we'll, we'll keep doing this as long as we get away with it if we start seeing cows come in with mastitis when they calve then maybe we'll rethink our position on this but as of right now it works great so this girl's been in here for 36 hours we're gonna bring her up to the milking area we'll milk her we'll send her back here and then in 36 hours from now i'll see what her udder looks like right now you can see she's got you know maybe a little bit of milk in there in 36 hours from now, I bet she's going to have hardly anything in there. She'll be living on this dry cow feed, which is very plain. She won't be milking anymore soon. Why didn't you want her in? She doesn't need to be milked. Too many cows in here. I didn't want to wrestle with the bone. There's a cow milking in the robot, so we're just waiting for her to be done, and then we'll put the cow in that we want to do a final milking on. Your sweater matches the robots. Yeah. Cows are excited because all of a sudden I brought this cow back in that hasn't been in here for a day and it seems like as soon as, you know, a cow's taken away from the herd for a day and then you bring her back, it's like everybody's gone wild again. It's a party. I guess so. She's 
just got burn hair. in her udder just by looking at it if it looks very slack then she'll be fine she's she'll be on dry cow feed for another 36 hours and the less you milk them the less they want to produce so my guess is she won't have to get milked again because that cow was not milking very much when I sent her back there a day and a half ago so doing a dry cow program where you're not going to dry treat your cows and you're just gonna try to get the milk to milk as little as they can in the end so they don't leak and they don't get an infection. I'm not saying that that's a good idea for everybody. I'm also not saying that we're saving a pile of money doing it this way because you can lose a lot of money if your cows come back in, have calves, and you notice that one quarter has was infected. By the time you notice it, they'll never milk out of that quarter again. So now you have a three quarter cow and you're probably not gonna breed her back at that point and you're just gonna sell her. So you can, you know, waste cows, especially if you just have, you know, even in a herd our size, two, three cows a year come in with an infected quarter because you didn't dry treat, then it's not worth it. I'm only saying it's, it works for us because they're not coming in with mastitis ever. And I think that's because the dry cows we're on sand at my brother's and they're on sand here. We can get away with not dry cow treating. So you, so we can get away with it because we're, we wean them off by getting them to milk a very small amount by the time we're, we dry them off. So they're not gonna bag up and leak in the dry cow area and they're on sand. And sand is very good for cow udders and cow health. So I think we can get away with it or we are and we'll continue to do it as long as the cows are not coming in having calves and getting mastitis or, or showing up with mastitis on the first milking. As long as they keep showing up with clean udders, like clean milk, out of all four quarters after they calve, we'll keep on not dry cow treating. So if anybody's interested in something like that, you're welcome to you know comment or, or reach out to Lauren or I. But I know there's some people that, you know, they're gonna think we're crazy. They'll never try it, they'll never do it. They maybe had bad experiences trying it, I don't know, but some guys really believe in the dry cow treatment and we got away with it from it years ago and it worked. 